Good morning, viewers. Welcome to yet another, ep another episode of uh, The Crossroads. We are favored by God to be found among the living. There's so much that is happening in the world. Each day that we are given, it's a special treasure, and we have cause and reason to thank the Lord because he has given us yet another day to transact on his behalf. With me in the studio, are two fine young men that the Lord will employ today uh, to bring out a rich word even as we discuss the subject that the Spirit has impressed upon us. Before we get into the, the discussion of the day, I would ask uh, Brother Sam to, to lead us in the word of prayer. Sure. Shall we pray? Our gracious servant, Father Bob, I want to thank you this morning, as you've given us this opportunity to speak and to discuss matters that pertain to salvation, mm. especially matters that, that affect us in our daily lives. Mm. As young men and our, our pastor, we may not have all the knowledge. Mm. Because you have it all, we ask that you be with us and guide us through all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, for the sake of our viewers who are new to the program, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce uh, uh, the panel that the Lord will be using, the presenters that will be used by the Lord, by the Spirit, in, uh, in the discussion that will follow. I'll start with my left and then we'll go to the right. Self-introduction, please. Sure. Uh, my name is Amumbula Samuel. And I'm a member of Crossroads, and I'm glad to be part of this program. Thank you. Thank you. Um, good morning, viewers. My name is Chomabasha Fomayor, and I'm a Bible student. Thank you so much. Uh, some of our panelists have other commitment. We miss them, but uh, they are praying for us. So we believe we are going to have a productive and constructive uh, uh, session we invite you to send your questions, if any, or comments to the number that you'll be seeing on the screen. Uh, we will dedicate some quality time toward the end of the program to answer those uh, sets of questions that will come from the viewers. Um, today, we are looking at the institution of marriage. Um, we believe that God is at the center of the institution of marriage. God indeed is the author of this institution. And we know that in the book of Genesis, the book of Genesis itself is a book of beginnings. It's the beginning of creation, the beginning of life, the beginning of the family as we know it. The beginning of the fall and the beginning of the story of redemption. With all the beginnings that we find in the book of Genesis, we find the beginning of marriage where God says, For this reason shall a man leave his father and mother and will be joined to his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. And somewhere there it also says, Therefore, whatsoever God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Mm -hmm. Now, we need to point out, beloved, that uh, in the book of Genesis we see the fall. But marriage is one of the institutions that survived the fall. fall. What, what is the other institution that survived the fall? The suburbs. The suburbs. And on this crossroads, we have discussed at length the blessing of the suburbs. Sure, indeed. And now we are looking at the sanctity of marriage mm -hmm. as two institutions that survived the fall. Why do you think these two institutions survived the fall? Let's start from there. Why do you think God preserved the suburbs and the institution of marriage to survive the fall. They had fallen. And then he drives them out of the Garden of Eden. He doesn't separate them, but they go fallen, but fallen, still married. Yes. Yeah. 
And um, just to come in on that one, if you look at marriage, mm -hmm. God's purpose for the marriage institution, for officiating the first marriage between Adam and Eve, was for the purpose of procreation. Mm -hmm. If you look at uh, the command given to them in chapter 1, he says, be fruitful and multiply and mm -hmm. subdue the earth. So God's objective in marriage was still to be fulfilled even after the fall. Hmm, I like was, that. I like that. Yes. For it was supposed to be a blessing to them. And actually, if you look at Genesis 2 verse 15, it was necessary that marriage continues mm -hmm. to enable the human race to continue to exist. Because through marriage, the Redeemer of the earth was going to come. Mm. So it was necessary for marriage to continue. For it is indeed a blessing. Then with regards to the Sabbath, mm -hmm. we are told in Exodus chapter, sorry, in um, Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 12, and also Exodus chapter 31 verse 17, that um, the, the Sabbath is a sign mm -hmm. between us and God, that he is the one who sanctifies us. So it's actually a sign of sanctification. Sanctification is something which also came about as a result of the fall. Mm -hmm. We needed to be sanctified because we had fallen. Okay. And this Sabbath also points to us, to that fact that we need to be sanctified as fallen beings. We need that relationship with Christ in order for us to experience the joy of salvation. Mm. Yeah. I, I like what you have pointed out. There is a word that you, you used or a term that you used. You say that one of the primary reasons why God ordained marriage, and this is pivotal to this, to this discussion, and the blessing that should follow a couple that, get, that chooses to get married. Sure. The primary reason must be understood. If we read uh, first, uh, the first chapter of Genesis, sure. verse, um, verse, let's read verse 28. Read verse 28. It reads, mm -hmm. and Maybe let's them. start with 27. Alright, so verse 27 says, mm -hmm. So God created man. Or should I start with 26? Uh, that's fine. Okay, mm -hmm. so 26 reads, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, mm -hmm. and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and mm -hmm. over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Mm -hmm. 27. So God created man in his own image. Mm -hmm. In the image of God created he him. Mm -hmm. Male and female created he them. Mm -hmm. 28. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, mm -hmm. Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. Mm -hmm. And have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. The Lord created, and I like the idea of starting from verse 26, God created male and female in his own image. In the image of God and in his likeness created he them. And then when, now right there, there are issues, pardon me if you talk about it, but there are issues because he who brought this whole concept together, he realized he needed a man and a woman. Sure. Are we together? Very much. If we get it wrong from the book of Genesis, then we have gotten it wrong everywhere. Completely. Are we together? True. So the source of marriage, he says, if this has to be called marriage, yes. it has to be between a man yes. and a woman. Yes. Now, we have already established the fact that marriage and the Sabbath are the two institutions that survived the fall. Mm -hmm. But even after surviving the fall, they are the two greatest institutions that the devil continues to want attack. to attack. The Sabbath has been changed. Sure. Daniel 7, verse 25. They shall think, oh, the spirit is bobbing upon me. <laughs> They shall think to change the one, the times and the laws. Hasn't that happened on the Sabbath question? It has. Can we borrow from Daniel 7.25? They shall also think mm -hmm. to change and alter the DNA of marriage. Such that the first person who brought this together, he sure. says, for this to work, man and woman. But today with their 
advancement of the human rights mm. agenda and this and that, we say Mary and Martha can still marry. Mm. Steve and James oh, can still. still marry. Would we still be relevant to the primary principle of marriage as it was ordained by God when we begin to veer off from the central thought as it was intended? I need your comments. It's critical. Mm -hmm. Before he tells them, uh, he blesses their union, he creates the one he should bless. Mm -hmm. Uh, when Adam was alone, God didn't make this pronouncement. It is possible he would have made another Adam mm -hmm. in his own wisdom. I like that. But then God made something. Mm. When Adam saw mm. in his purity, mm. then mm -hmm. he claimed and said, This is a woman. Mm. And this is Eve. Mm. And, then I, and then this is born of my bone. And, and I <laughs> Brother Sam, yes. I'm continue, continue. <laughs> you know, the problem is we've lost that exclamation. Mm. You can only, when you are moved naturally, mm -hmm. as it were originally, mm. in the whole emotion, mm -hmm. you will see and exclaim. Mm. But when you lose that, we have gone so down mm. that we can't see God's blessings in the in the one that He has created. Mm. Then we look at the fellow man and exclaim. Oh, there's, there's a danger. Wow. Then, then, then he made he him. <laughs> you see, he made he him. That he, you know, the, the problem is the best goes distorted. Yeah. Then the yeah. end of it all, there is no blessing after. There is no blessing. Yeah. Now, Brother Chumba brought a point of uh, procreation. Yeah. Exactly. Do you exactly. know that this is deeper than many of us look at it? Exactly. Because this is the preserve of humanity. Mm -hmm. Angels. Mm -hmm. When they stand on the scale of procreation, yes. they are weighed and found what? Wanting. Wanting. They have been denied the privilege to procreate. Sure. Indeed. And this rare privilege has been given to humanity. Mm -hmm. But then we tend to be abusing it already. Where, because if a man marries a fellow man, can they procreate? That's kind of true. If a woman marries another woman, can they still procreate? No. You can adopt, mm -hmm. but is that procreation? No, it's not. Adoption and procreation are two different things. Actually, strictly, if we say this to adopt as human beings, the, <coughs> the stance that male and male should marry, then I think that would bring utter extinction of the human race. Mm -hmm. Because the only way that the human race is being preserved right now is because there are still some people who are living by the principles which God had still given us of marriage happening between male and female. So if we decided to go our own way and say no, let the males and the males uh, marry each other, the females vice versa, then I think that, I believe that will bring extinction to us mm. and it seems to exist. So we will be guilty of not following through with the original agenda of God sure. exactly. as in procreating. Yes. Apart from that, mm -hmm. dom yes. there's dominion, there's a part of dominion. There's a part of dominion. So you get dominion over mm -hmm. fish, mm -hmm. one, animals, everything that is under us. Can you imagine God has a way of making every generation be dominant mm -hmm. over these things? Mm -hmm. Mm. And he's made every generation to grow at a certain rate. Mm. And he's the one who gives actual faith. If you are able to, to conceive and it's mm. God's blessing. Sometimes even when you try hard, it doesn't happen. Until he allows it. Mm. He manages the growth of a human race and gives them dominion according to their time. Mm. And God is in charge of everything. Mm. So when, he, when we begin to begin to thwart the plan, mm. we just stand in between. Sooner or later, our dominion is lost. Like, no wow. progression, wow. how can we manage? Mm -hmm. we may not. Actually, that point that you are bringing out, I don't know if we will do justice to look at it at, in this session, because there are certain communities sure. that have, they are no longer posting any population growth. Okay, yeah. Mm. So they are not procreating because the young people who are still in that age bracket where they can procreate, yes. 
Women have married their fellow women. Men have married fellow men. So procreation has been erased from the, from the temple. The only growth that they are posting is by way of immigrants that are coming to those locations. When they do census, the growth that they post, they are immigrants that are coming. So like he has said, there is danger to lose the dominion, even the dominion to procreate. When we begin to come up with different concepts other than those ordained by God, sure. the author of marriage, mm. and so much goes at stake. Sure. Sure, very sure. Egypt realized that mm. and told the children of Israel, mm. care of the male. Mm. Just let the male go. Because if you leave the male, they may marry the Egyptians. And they may, you know, right. But cut the male. Right. We will not decide to marry the, the Egyptians. Yeah, so true. that was trying to cut creation, mm -hmm. making them to be less but dominant. But who is at the center of this whole process of trying to destroy procreation? Is it the Lord or the enemy of all souls? I believe without a doubt that it is the enemy who is trying to destroy marriage. And actually he is trying to destroy it at so many levels. Mm. Let me also stress that it is not God's design that anyone should be born outside of marriage. Hmm. It has never been God's design. He has always ordained that whoever is coming on the earth mm -hmm. should come under the care of a father and a mother. And Satan has laid his plan so deep that um, he makes people to have all these kinds of relations which cause children to be born outside of marriage. And when those children, um, they grow up, they end up not having a certain side which they're supposed to have, uh, whether it be it with regards to having a mother or a father. And that also affects how they are able to relate with um, their spouses in the future when they grow up. Mm -hmm. So Satan is really laying his plans so deep that um, he's even affecting the way people are brought up. And when those children who never had a certain parent, when they grow up, they may not know how to relate with um, right. their spouse when they grow up. Yes. So that's what um, the I'll still come back to Brother Chomba, um, but beloved of God, we must be clear. I was reading the other day Acts chapter 20, verse 27. Are you able to read Acts 20, verse 27? Um, Acts 20. Yeah, verse 27. Acts 20, verse 27. Yes, what does it say? Okay, this is 27, my there. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Mm. For I have not shunned to declare unto you the whole counsel of God. Sure. You and I are seated on that plat on this platform. Sure. Not to give your own opinions. Sure. Our job description here is to give the whole counsel. counsel of God, the entire counsel of God. Sure. And on the on the, in regards to marriage, the counsel of God it is man and woman, male and female. That's the whole counsel of God. Sure. If you want to stretch it, you are adding, or you are. But the whole counsel of God is man and woman coming together to procreate. It is God's intention to fill this whole world with children that bear the image and the likeness of God. And this is where Brother Joshua says uh, uh, it is God's intention that uh, a child should be brought into this life in the presence of a father and a mother. Mm -hmm. Jesus was brought in that very atmosphere. Mm -hmm. The father taught him how to use his hands sure. to labor. The mother was the first teacher sure. to teach him the ways of God, the ways of God and the ways of life. Sure. Mm -hmm. So mother and father are essential in the 
growth of a child. When this is, the, and there are so many children, God forbid, there are so many children that are raised in a broken family. Either the father did not accept the pregnancy at the time the child was conceived, or the mother was first maybe raped and then she conceived, and the, the man is not there. These children can grow, yes, by the grace of God, but there is something, there is an element, parental advice that is missing, especially for the parent who is in there. Uncles may come in, but there is need for a father. There is need for a mother. Yeah, Brother Choma. And maybe I'd just like to touch a topic which may seem sensitive. Mm -hmm. Okay, because of various reasons, of course, uh, people do not, people tend to grow up in maybe with a single mother or a single father, especially because of death. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's very understandable. Uh, however, there are some people who believe that um, it is okay for them that they do not need, either the man believes they do not need the woman, mm. or the woman believes they do not need the man mm. to bring up a child. I'd like to emphasize that that is not God's design, mm -hmm. that it should be that way. Um, there's, it is necessary for a child to grow up with both the mother and the father, mm. because it robs the child of the certain of the love they have, and also of the affection they deserve from both parents. Okay. So we should try as much as possible not to downplay the necessity of having either the father in their life mm. or the mother in their life. Mm. Because of course I understand there are certain people who grow up, maybe the father died when they were young. Mm. However, there are also those who just decide to put one of the cardinal people away in parenthood, mm. which is not right because it deprives the child who's growing up of the love, of the counsel which they're supposed to have. And actually, I got into some statistics. Uh, for, for example, mm -hmm. for children who are growing up without a father, they are five times more likely to indulge in things like crime mm -hmm. and also in drug abuse. So that's, that just shows how um, these parents, how both parents are necessary. And also for a child who's growing up without a mother, they, they tend to be rough mm -hmm. and they, they, they are not affectionate. And that mm -hmm. also affects how they relate with other people in society. Mm -hmm. So we, we should always keep in mind of these things. There's a reason why God ordains that when a child is brought into the world, they should come up having a father and a mother on both sides. Thank you so much, Brother Chomba. I'd like to guide this discussion in another area. We have sure. established the, 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 the foundational thought, the foundational plan of that. Sure. It's pro procreation. Here is a young man and a young woman who are contemplating marriage. What counsel should they seek before entering upon this sacred institution? What advice <coughs> do you have for a young man intending to find a young lady for marriage. We have given them the whole counsel of God. The whole counsel, it is Steve and, and Eve. Eve. <laughs> 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 it's not Steve and Steve. No, it's Steve and Eve. And that's and not Adam and Steve. And that's the whole counsel of what? Of God. Now, our viewers are following this. There is a young man who feels attracted to, to, to men, but now he is repositioning himself because he has seeking to the whole counsel of God. Sure. He who offered marriage made Adam and Eve, sure. and that tradition has to be maintained. We have come to a time when this young man and this young lady wants to marry. What counsel, gentlemen, do you hear? I wish there was a lady here, but uh, today we are. We miss Sister Armand. Yes, yeah. Um, what counsel do you have to give? Let me, let me ask this question this way. Do we need divine guidance? Do we need parental guidance as we contemplate the marriage question? Who yeah. answers? 
Thank you so much for that. Uh, somebody says, you cannot make a banana cake without bananas. Mm -hmm. How can you expect a Christian marriage without Christ? Mm. Now, Brother John, there are men out there, there are women out there who desire Christian yes. marriages. Yes, please. They may not be Christian themselves. Yes. But they know a Christian woman would raise my children well. Even if I'm not a Christian, a Christian man would look after me well, even though I'm not a Christian. Sure. But how do you come up with a Christian marriage <coughs> at the neglect of Christ? Moreover, for those who are seeking a Christian partner mm -hmm. and they themselves are not Christian, what makes them think the Christian partner will be attracted to mm -hmm. them? Yeah. So I think it's really uh, something which we need to. Look at even as we seek for people to marry, we should ensure that we have Christ in our in, in us because for us to have a Christ-centered marriage, it takes two, not one. Mm -hmm. It takes both people, not just one, to make up that union. Mm -hmm. When you multiply 0 0.9 by 0 0.9, you get a number less than one. Mm -hmm. But when you multiply one and one, you get one. So it takes two whole people. Mm -hmm. People having Christ mm -hmm. to make up a whole. Right. When they are anything less than that, when then they are. I like even, your mathematics. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> kidding. Yeah, sorry. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. They are union you actually make them worse mm -hmm. than they were individually. Mm -hmm. So we need it Christ uh, at the same oh, time. I'm getting excited. I know you are also. Uh, let me give you time. What, what is on your mind? I, 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 unfortunately, mm -hmm. most unions are half. Mm. One is half baked, the other one is not baked at all. Mm. Or one is fully baked, <laughs> then one is three quarters baked. You know who takes, who short as the other one? Mm. Is actually the one that is fierce God. Mm. They have to strain, they have to go through too much yeah. to bear with it all. Mm. It's dangerous. What you are really trying to do is Kill that belief in that mm. person. When you are not so much of the Lord, you get somebody of the Lord, you are draining that person. Mm -hmm. And God, that's why he doesn't allow the two to walk together mm. until they agree. Until the they agreement agree. is... I like that. Levels. I like that. Sure. The agreement should happen at different levels. Yes. Do we agree on church level? Yes. Do we agree on spiritual matters? Yes. Do we agree on how many children we are going to have? Yes. Do we agree that we will visit your parents? We yes. will also visit your parents. Sure. Yeah. Do we agree that should we have no children? Yes. We will still work together in this. Mm. Because we need to agree. We need to agree at different levels. Sure. Yeah. For yeah. better or for what? Mm. For worse. And I think the agreement seems to be there, especially at the, at the people to live on so mm. spirituality. Even when it comes to the running of the home and bringing up of children. Sure. Because that's where some couples find problems. So agreement also needs to be at those levels, especially on the ones which border on spirituality. As Let, thank you so much. Yeah. Let me bring you, we have talked about uh, uh, divine guidance. It's authentic, it's fundamental, it can't be replaced. It has to be there. It has to stand. It has to be there. Let me bring in the dimension of parental guidance. Sure. We are an awakened society. Do we still need parental guidance? Unfortunately. Maybe you are a university graduate, like okay. some of you guys. Sure. You are learned, you are articulate, you can reason from cause to effect. Okay. Your father maybe didn't even finish grade seven. Uh, yeah. He labored to send you to school. Yeah. Your mother was waking up very early in the morning, praying that the Lord would order your steps in the way you should go. Now that you have become a university graduate, you have found another university graduate whom you want to marry. Is it necessary at that time, educated as you are, sure. to seek parental guidance? Or we can do without it? Let me hear your reaction. I, 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 I got you first. Uh, we are a sophisticated kind mm. of uh, generation. 
Unfortunately, we are not. Mm. For me, what I see is maybe we are lost. <laughs> we are, we claim, we claim, we claim. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. That's what makes us actually feel we need mm. to do well with that. So, do we have parents so that you prove that you are intelligent enough? Intelligent, so scared? <laughs> no. You see, actually, it shows that how less you are confident mm. about who you are. When you do all with your own parents, mm. there was a time when we were supposed to do all with them. Mm. When we didn't need them. Mm. To show them we didn't need them. Mm. We're supposed to grow up on our own. Mm. First of all, and achieve it all mm. without, without them. them. Then we'll tell them, now come and see mm. what I've done. Without you. I get birth to myself. <laughs> I grew up on my own. <clears throat> and here I am bearing fruits. Mm. So come and see who I want to marry now. As a proof that without you, to make it. But then, they've been all over with us, apart from the first four years, five years, seven years, after you were a medical doctor, who you are. Then you turn around and say, but who are these? Asking you, who would be who? These, these guys, they're not part of me. A normal reason a girl, girl or lady or woman would think twice before allow such a man, or vice versa. A man who, who does all with the parents. And he has disqualified himself. Definitely, I would say to all viewers, mm. disqualify that person mm. immediately. immediately. Because, man, who, who do you think is going to take care of you? Mm. After some time, it's possible to do all of let, let, Let's get into the word of God. What, what, is there a divine injunction where sure. we are supposed to respect I, parents? Yeah. I, have, I, have, I have to look at one thing. God okay. went to the children of Israel away yes. from the bondage. Mm -hmm. He knew they have many things in them. Mm -hmm. The Egyptian thing was in them. Mm. So when he took them away, he called Moses and told him, Come to mm. the mountain. And this is what I'll do to you. you I want to. Do, you are giving the whole council now. I, I want them to, to know something. I yeah. want them to know something. And ap apart from knowing something, they should know me first. Mm. Then he says in Exodus 20, he says, And the Lord said these mm. things. He begins to describe himself as a God who created, mm. who must be given reverence. Mm. He's a God who's jealous. Mm. He's a God who can visit, uh, who can who can bless and mm. also bring problems to mm. those that ignore him. Visit the iniquities, the iniquities of, of those that you know. Do and he can go and on and on and he gives them a Sabbath and says, mm. remember the Sabbath. the Sabbath. This is all about him. Mm. And finally he says, okay, I'm done with me. Mm. From one to four, it's about me. me. Yeah. Now, he, he, all he, these verses <laughs> that we call from verse one, the whole coming up to verse the whole eleven, is coming it's up me. Now. Okay, it's me. It's mm -hmm. me. It's me. Holy and holy and mm -hmm. holy about mm -hmm. himself. Then holy and holy the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. The next thing he brings is whole another father. Oh, mm -hmm. that's verse the whole <laughs> That's the whole thing. Why didn't he go and say, "Love your neighbor"? Mm -hmm. Do not kill. Do not watch. So you. first things first. Honor. He begins by with himself. Yes. When he has exhausted, and he's not a selfish God. No. He says only four. Only four. Only four for me. Yeah. <laughs> then of the course with eleven verses in it. <laughs> One, two, three, four is about me. Yeah. yeah. Then the rest is about what? About you guys. But before I came down there, mm. before I talk about you guys down the hill, mm. listen to me. The first after me. Is the father. Oh. And what your father and mother deserves first is honor. Mm. There's no way you can fail to acknowledge, acknowledge them in critical moments. So this is a divine dictum. It comes from God. Yes, with a blessing. He, he says that honor, he, he wants you and I to respect him. Yes. And then when he's done, he says, we have done first things first. Yes. Now, now and the second thing, thing is your father. Yes. Your mother. Not your neighbor. Not your neighbor. Not your classmate. But the neighbor is coming later. <laughs> Not your fiancé. Oh, I like this. I like man. We have been to <laughs> God first. Then he what? The he parent. brings in the parents. Yes. And then they he brings to narrate the neighbor. Them. Until he talks about do not covet your neighbor as the last thing. Wow. Talk about neighbors in the first thing. Yeah, and actually, one of my favorite writers says, in the early times of a child, mm. the parents hold the place of God on earth. Sure. Yeah, like that's a really serious thing. To a child who's just growing up, as young as they are. Let's read that let's read that uh, that text yeah, so which has a promise. Honor thy father, what does it say? Yes, so that's what that's going to be so says. Mm -hmm. yes. Honor thy father and thy mother, mm -hmm. that thy days may be long upon the land Ooh, I love that. which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Now wait a minute, what if I dare? The Lord has given you what? Days. 
on this okay. earth. Uh -huh. He said, you will live for so many years. Mm -hmm. But it's, those years can be diminished sure. by how you honor your, your, honor your father and your mother. Sure. So is it possible to say, if I was given 70 years, yes. but through the way I relate to my parents, those years can be reduced to 45? Completely. Is that what the Bible Even says? Even less. True. That's the whole counsel of God. You are. Even less. Even less. Even less. So how many people have died because they did not honor their parents? How many marriages have failed because parents were not honored. <clears throat> How many people have lost jobs? The, 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 their longevity in this job is affected because they did not honor their parents. Picking it from Brother Sam, first God first, sure. then parents, sure. and then neighbors. Yes. If we don't respect God, in issues of marriage, we have shortened the lifespan of our marriage. If we don't respect our parents in regards to this subject, we have shortened our lifespan, even the lifespan of our relationship. Sure. Help me, help the viewer out there. How do we, if we had made mistakes, we didn't evolve, we didn't seek parental guidance when we entered. Married. How do we recover lost territory? How do we make a rebound when wrongs were done? How do we do that? Okay, making a rebound, there's always a way, the godly way. Mm -hmm. We need to just think about it and surrender to God. Mm -hmm. You may be in a relationship already that ignore the parents. Mm -hmm. um, parents, in the nature of big parents, are not suffering mm -hmm. for their own child. Mm. So that relationship that God has for us, even as we go wayward, bestows it on parents. Mm. As they raise you, they can't let, they can't let go easily. Mm. Mm. So even if you've left them as a child, it's easier to return and make The heart it. of the parent is a receptive heart. Sure. That's yes. a, a genuine parent. Yes. <laughs> the actual parent, the good parent, mm. of course. Mm. You go back there, but to accept and make amendments. Mm. However, the consequences of certain things that we make, that we decide may actually be visible. Samson. Mm. Yeah. God asked the parent, bearing as they were. Mm. Now you're going to have a child, mm. but he's a Nazareth. No less. All instruction they stored in the parent. Then they raised the child up. I like that. And after the child is grown up, the child begins to pat my hair. I said, mm. no, no. No, no. Mm. even when Samson was telling me, he looks at Brother Chav. He says, I'm not doing he wants. Yeah, I'm not doing what he wants. I'm not doing what he wants. You can't. Because be like you are different. But who did that? The parents. The parents. Until he was so sure, mm. you have uh, agreed to be. Okay, fine. Then you feel like it's just me. Mm. There's a time when we just feel like mm. this is the way I am. It's mm. not the way you are. It's the parent that made you to be in the hand. And you, at the I said, what is your power? Then he begins to hide. Because he was sure. Mm. My parents didn't just say, it's real. Mm. Because it's now happening. So until, after some point, he says, no, now I need to go out my own way. Because it pleases me. Mm. Not them, but me. Yeah. That was the beginning. So at that point, Samson has, uh, has a, he has eradicated the, the, the parents yes. from the plan. Yes, from the plan. Uh -huh. I am powerful. Uh -huh. I didn't shave my hair. I don't need them. And nobody told me. Maybe he didn't remember who I told me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need them. But he forgets that they never drank wine. They, just, mm. they have to leave. They have to sacrifice many they, things before they, they just get That up. point, that point. Let, let's, let's, let's not lose that point. Yeah, I'm just sure. How much was sacrificed? The self-denial that went into the mother prior to conception because the angel said, Do not. You are going to have the child. Sure. You are not going to eat anything unclean. There were dietary instructions that were sure. given so that what she ingests would not affect negatively the child, the child that will be born as a deliverer. Mm -hmm. The parents did their part. Mm -hmm. But when he is born, he chooses to disobey the parents. Yes. That's the what do you think about that? 
for me, I, I believe really for a person who is just reasoning the right way, they should know that there is no way a parent has brought you from when you are young mm -hmm. up to a certain age. And when it comes to marriage, all of a sudden they just want to ruin your life. Mm -hmm. Like, that does not make sense. It does not make sense. No, it does not make Completely sense. Not. A genuine parent who loves you wants the best, mm -hmm. especially on this point, which is at the center of your life. Mm. They want you to succeed. They want you to benefit from the experience they've gained with uh, regards to either their mother or their father, mm. with both of them. Mm. They want you to gain the experience they've gained in their marriage. They want you to make the right decisions. But I don't know why we young people get this impression that parents just want us to fail. They don't mm. want the best for us. But truly, when you get sick, it is them who actually be feeling the pain. It is them who will be making the sacrifices. Mm. Oh, yeah. So, I do not know why we as young people sometimes just become so headstrong like Samson. She pleases me well. Mm. Yes, so really it's, it's but very important. Do you see, do you see the fulfillment of Exodus chapter 20 verse Four, where it says, so that thy days may be long yes. upon. Didn't Samson shorten his lifespan because of parental disobedience? Yeah, true. I believe if he did not go in the path of uh, seeking acquaintance or seeking marriage relations with women who his parents had advised mm. him against, he would have really lengthened his life. Now, I want to ask another question, beloved and viewers out there. Um, these two young men are well learned. We praise God for that. Are you both married? I'm married. You're married. Are you married? No. He's available. <laughs> <laughs> He's available. Now, uh, if Brother Chopper say he wants to get married, but he realizes, no, my father is learned, he walks, with a limp, um, he has no nice clothes, or he's known in the village to be a, a wizard. I don't want to be seen with him. What is your advice to this brother who wants to exclude the parents on this his great day? just because of their social economic status. Is he in order to exclude the family because of who he is seen to be in society? Is he in order to exclude the father because the father is considered to be to be a wizard? Yeah, he, he, he is a wizard and he is not respected in society. He's a poor man. Uh, is this intending young man, intending to get married, is he in order when he decides to stand apart from the, apart from the parents? Let me see. You want to? Yes, that? Yes, I've been through it all. In the marriage thing, any genuine marriage begins with the parents. Mm -hmm. Regardless who they are in society. Unfortunately, in a poor country, uh, a third world countries, on average, most parents are struggling to make it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, on average, most of our parents have been they have exhausted all they know to see, to bring in a generation which talks and say these guys are mm -hmm. the, the, the The generation before had to make courses mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. So, that we, our parents, we, we will learn it later. Mm -hmm. That we have to let go of certain things. That's right. For our children to, to be build. competitive, yes. The world is becoming more global. Mm. Our mm. children will train us more mm. than we have done to our parents. Mm. If they have to make it. Until they are there, then we understand that parents is not something we are supposed to play with. They have we exhausted some of them because of us. Or because of whoever it is. But they are our parents. You know, when you're growing up a child, they, there is always a chance to let go. Mm. When a child is small, Mm -hmm. They expose so many dangers that just a small winking mm. 
at any child that's been here before five, that child would go and they're just the bed and first of all. You look at this age, the parent is not serious, can just let go. But after you go past that age, they were lame in it then. Mm. Were they not blind then? Did they not have money then? But how come you are where you are? So that now you should say, oh, mm, my big day, especially if you are inviting your so-called big friends. Mm. It's easy, the temptation is there. Mm. But brethren, we need to overcome this. A parent, regardless of who they are, mm. they are a parent. Mm. In whatever condition, they are the ones that will bless. Mm. Whoever comes has no power. They are just colleagues. Yeah. I, I, appreciate, I appreciate that. I want you to quickly comment on something that I'll say in regards to what Brother Sama said. Parents have an unrivaled place. Sure. When it comes to marriage. Like the unrivaled. Yes. <laughs> Their place is unchallenged. Mm -hmm. uh, today, I'm looking at my church, your church, our church. Sure. We have a function of family life ministries in the local church. Sure. Um, they have become so dominant to a point where sometimes I feel like they have overshadowed the parents where Brother Choma comes and uh, he tells the mother and the father that, no, I found a lady to marry. And then also the lady does the same thing. And then they bring the matter to the church. And then the church, through the family life department, they have these uh, uh, rules that have been put in place that makes the whole process so tedious. They have even gone to a point where they can, uh, they can, they can reschedule the, 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 the wedding day that was agreed upon by parents. Help me understand something here. Help. Yes, has the church become too dominant? Yeah, has the church become too dominant to a point where we have overshadowed parental control? Has the church become the parent superseding the father and the mother of the bride, the father and the mother of the groom? Mm -hmm. Help me understand. I think I did that's to some of those experiences. <laughs> Not really. The <laughs> experience is quite limited. However, um, yes. but it seems so. There's, there's a danger here. Mm -hmm. When you've learned the Bible, mm -hmm. you have the you can go about crack mm. your evangelist main before you marry or something, right? Jonga, for example. Mm. Uh, there's the confidence which comes, which I call holy confidence. Mm. Then you trust your church. Mm. If your parents are not church, mm. or they're not being held that, as that's where, uh, Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> and I like the way you're bringing it up. Yes. The, 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 the parents that I'm bringing here sure. are not saying that with his parents. Oh, yeah, yeah. You are an Adventist. Chomba is an Adventist. Sure. He wants to marry an Adventist lady. Sure. But because the parents are non Adventists, yes. they tend to believe more of the church than what their parents are saying. Sure. So complete your counsel. Oh, yeah. So this gentleman or lady um, will just focus on what the Bible says, of mm -hmm. course, not very bad. Focus on the counsel from the elders of the church. I thank the family ministries because. Um, situations now are critical. Most people that come to church, counsel is not gotten most. Unfortunately, on that part, parents sometimes don't do much mm -hmm. on this counsel for somebody to get it. So they, the church does. They supplement. Things. They supplement actually to a greater extent. Mm -hmm. To a point that uh, I buy, I trust the church. Mm -hmm. I trust the family life. They do too much to be overlooked. So when you're making a decision, mm -hmm. it's easier to actually overlook the parents and overshadow them. Mm -hmm. Actually, the church may actually not even remind mm -hmm. at some point. You will just do thinking there's something happening in the background. And yet, yeah. you have just them and them alone. Mm -hmm. yeah. And critical decisions come, which only parents can do. Mm -hmm. The legal way, yes. they'll ask for parents. Mm -hmm. Then they come and minister and say, the parents. The parents, mm -hmm. when? The parents. Then you just go and get them a rubber stamp, just stamping them. Meanwhile, you've ignored them. And some parents just pull out and say, okay, I've, I've, I've seen parents who just mm -hmm. say, if, if, the the church, church, if the church is the parent they now, they rebel. if you go ahead. Yeah. Is that a blessing? No. They're not blessing. That already tells you. There's a problem. Because they find that they are competing yes, for attention with the church. 
I'm brother. Actually, actually um, marriage is, I believe, uh, between families, mm -hmm. and not just the individuals, because it is two families, which, two families okay. which are being joined. Mm -hmm. That's the point. And I feel like, um, in as much as someone's parents may not be of the same faith, mm -hmm. there's still a lot of counsel, relevant, good counsel which they can give, which shall be important mm -hmm. yeah. in the marriage relation, mm -hmm. yeah. and that should be acknowledged. And there's no church that will take parental blessing from this child who is intending to get married. Mm -hmm. We may be the true church, but yes. when it comes to com or com or conferring parental blessings yes. upon some, yes. let some's father do that. That's the point. Yes. I may be the pastor yes. of some, yes. but I'm underweight when it comes to me. I must yield the right of way. We need to call my father and say, no, my son, the day has finally come. For this reason, shall a man leave the father and mother and be joined to Now, yeah. gentlemen, I, I wish we had more time. I wish we had more time. We have run out of time. I wanted, maybe for another session, um, I wanted you to react. There are people that I have ministered to, possessed by demons, evil spirits. And then on the day of marriage, some finds a young fine lady. But this woman, he doesn't know that she's possessed by demons. Oh, yeah. On the day of marriage, Sam has, uh, I mean, uh, sure. Brother Chomba has paid the dowry. Sure. The wedding date is set. Sure. I have seen this myself. Sure. Mm. On the day of marriage, he wants to, to hold the wife, and then the wife manifests. <laughs> then, and then he begins to speak with a male voice. Whoa. This is our wife. Back of men, <laughs> <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then uh, it told you that uh, she is married to us. Mm. Now those are what demons. Yes. The issue of spiritual husbands vis-a-vis -vis marriage. I wish we had time to talk about yeah. that. And maybe for another session because we need to answer some uh, SMS messages. You want to say something? Yeah. I only say that's why people need to be hidden in Christ. Mm. Before they even decide to join one another, Amen. there's, uh, I believe, if someone is really hidden in Christ mm. and they are praying, they will not be, they will not reach a point whereby they want to marry someone and then they get to discover on that day mm. that the person has got uh, demons. I believe God will find his own way of revealing such things to us. So that's why it is very, very important to involve him in, in these steps that you take. Well, viewers, we wish we had more time to, to discuss this issue, um, but the devil is at work. The Bible says, John 10 verse 10, brother son, the devil cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I, I am come, that they may have life, and have it abundantly. Uh, the devil is at work. He wants to destroy the very foundation of marriage. He wants to confuse the population out there. Sure. A man can be attracted to another man, a woman to another woman. A son is made not to respect the parents. Hence, you miss out on parental blessings when you need it most. Sure. Mm. God wants us to involve him sure. so that he will be the first person to confer his divine blessing. Remember, no banana cake without bananas. Indeed. And no Christian marriage without Christ. Christ. Mm -hmm. We have to be centered in Christ. And we are going to pray for those who are contemplating marriage, that your feet will be ordered in the way you should go. Amen. Uh, at this time, I don't know if how much time we have. Uh, we'll see if there are any SMS messages that can. Uh, I'm told there are no messages that can through. I don't know if our system is down, but if there are any messages that will come through Facebook, we are going to do justice in our next next session. For now, I'll ask Brother Chumba to pray for your fellow and married so that uh, the Lord can bless them and encourage them to seek part of blessings. Because yes. it's a divine command. If you guys want to live long, <laughs> you need part of blessings. Sure. Shall we pray? Okay, our okay. Our dear, kind and heavenly Father, 
We thank you so much for the wonderful blessing of marriage that you've given us, an institution that is so sweet and that you have designed to reflect the heavenly home. Mm. I ask, dear Lord, that even as we, your children, in this world seek to make such an important step towards mm. the choice of a life partner, mm. you may be at the center of our decision making. Mm. I pray that you may lead us all in the way in which you would have us walk. Help us to include you at the center, mm. even as we make our homes, and help us to involve you in each and every step. It's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I pray. We thanks you in my heart. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, viewers. Unfortunately, we don't have SMS messages like I said, but uh, if they are there, uh, maybe due to system failure, we will accommodate them. We'll try to answer them in our next session. Sure. Until then, this has been The Crossroads. God bless and have a pleasant day. Yes, thank, thank you. Bye. When you were hopelessly lost in sin, condemned to eternal death, 